Welcome to another Holiness Meeting from the Trinidad and Tobago Division, including St. Vincent and Grenada. We are glad that you have joined us once more and pray God's blessing upon you. here at the Salvation Army. A wonderful feeling to know that you have allowed us to come into your homes and to worship with you. We have a very interesting theme this morning, the all-sufficient God, the all-sufficient God. And later on in, in our service, Major Glenda St. John will come to speak to us about this all-sufficient God. But at this time, I want to encourage you to join with us as we begin our worship. I want to encourage you to call a friend. Let them know that the Salvation Army is in their homes, to invite the Salvation Army in their homes so they can worship. There's a beautiful chorus which says, I delight in you. I rejoice forevermore. And how I love to magnify your name. Lifting holy hands as a sacrifice of praise. For all you've done 
and for blessings on the way. Let us have a beautiful time as we come into the presence of the Lord. God. I want to read scripture for you, Psalm 40, just a few verses. And this, starting from verse 1, and this is what it says. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay, set my feet up upon a rock and established my goings and he hath put a new song praise God in my mouth even praise unto our God many shall see and fear and shall trust in the Lord blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust and respecteth not the proud nor such as turn aside to lies. Many, O Lord, my God, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done. Thy thoughts which are to us word, they cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. For if I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. The sixth verse says, Sacrifice and offering thou dost not desire. My ear hast thou opened. Burnt offering and sin offering hast thou not 
required. And we know that all that we do, all that we have, all of our help, it comes from our God. I want to invite you to join us as we sing this chorus before we have a word of prayer. Draw me close to you. Never let me go. I lay it all down again to hear you say, I am your friend. Let's sing together and worship the Lord with this beautiful chorus. God and we stand in agreement and we believe that you are the all sufficient God when we think that we are lacking in any way you told us that we can come boldly oh God 
We stand on your word. We stand on your truth that we can come boldly before your throne of grace. Oh Lord, so we come. And we ask for your mercy. We ask for your grace to be upon us. We ask, oh God, that wherever we are lacking today, wherever we feel as though we are insufficient, I pray, God, that you would make us sufficient. And I pray, God, that you would cause us to be content to abide in your presence, not to seek after other gods, but to seek after the God we serve with all of our hearts, our souls, our minds. And we pray, oh God, that as, as people turn on their YouTube and as they listen to the service, oh God, they will be reminded us of this very important truth that we serve an all-sufficient God. And Lord, it would empower them this morning. It would empower them this afternoon and it would empower them tonight to trust God, to trust God, to have hope in their living God because he is for them. He is for us. So bless your speaker as she would come later on. We ask, oh God, for your anointing to be upon every scripture and, and every song and everyone who presents this morning and for the hearers and watchers, oh God. May they be truly blessed through this service. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen.
Hallelujah. If you have joined us just now, we remind you of our theme for today, the all-sufficient God. We are serving a mighty God, a God who provides for his children. We have a wonderful song, and we ask you to share it with us. There shall be showers of blessing. This is the promise of love. There shall be seasons refreshing, sent from the Savior above. Showers of blessing. Showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. Let's have a wonderful scene together. There shall be showers of blessing. This is the promise of love. There shall be seasons of worship. Set from the Savior above. Showers of blessing. Showers of blessing we need. Message of sonnets are falling. But for the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessing, precious reviving again. Over the hills and the valleys, sound of abundance of rain. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing to me. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we please. Shall be showers of blessing, send them upon us, O oh Lord. God to us now are refreshing. Come and now honor thy word. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing within. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. The last verse says, There shall be showers of blessing. Oh, that today they might fall. Now as to God we're confessing. Now as on Jesus we call. Showers of blessing. Showers of blessing we need. Mercy jobs on us are falling. But for the showers we plead. Let's, we plead. Let's sing the last verse joyfully together. There shall be showers of blessing. Oh, that today they might fall. Now as to God we confess it. Now as on Jesus we call. Showers of blessing. Showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling. But for the showers we plead. Showers of blessing. Showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Dear friends, I want to share my testimony with you today. My testimony is a testimony of the love and the mercy of God that I have experienced. I was never a drinker or a smoker or a gangster. I was never a person of violence or abuse. I was never a criminally minded person. I was never a murderer, a traitor, or an anarchist. But in my life so far, I have been to many places and done a lot of things and seen many more. I have been there and done that as people say. Nothing human has been alien to me. In a season of my life, sometime in the past, naivety, loss, doubt, anger, disappointment, depression, and ignorance led me into error in thought and deed. I came to experience the words of an old poem that says, where briars grow on weary sheep, be fogged by hungry need, entangle their fleece amidst the thorns, 
were the only taught to feed. But dear friends, God's mercy saved me and healed me and restored me. God's mercy does not allow us to be consumed because the Bible says in Lamentations chapter 3 verse 22 and verse 23 that it is because of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. In Isaiah chapter 42 verse 3, the prophet says that a bruised reed God will not break and a smoking flax God will not quench. Not because we deserve it, but because of God's love. God's love understands and feels and forgives and heals and strengthens and helps and gives another chance. God's love shows his mercy. Friends, I am still discovering life and I am still discovering God's universe. And at times it seems as if it is a hard road to travel and a mighty long way to go. I see a lot of things around me that I cannot explain. And I realize that the more that I think I know is the more I also realize I do not know a lot of things. But even though that is the case, I am convinced that surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life as the psalmist says in psalm 23 verse 6 dear friends i know whom i have believed in and i am persuaded that he is able to keep that which i have committed unto him against that day whoever you are this morning and whatever you have done in your life you too can receive the mercies and the love of God. God has no desire to extinguish you or to out your light, as 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9 says. God wants you to find his mercy and love, just like I did, and receive a rebirth and a reconciliation and a restoration and boost and build your confidence, just as I experienced. Don't give up, dear friends, but allow God to work in and around you to bring you to the place in your life where you can accept and submit to his will, his order, and his rule in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, dear friends. Amen.
morning, I'd like to share with you from two passages. The first is 2 Corinthians 2, verses 14 to 17. And uh, 2 Corinthians 12, 9 to 10. It says, Now thanks be unto God, who always causes us to triumph in Christ and makes manifest the savor of his knowledge. For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ, in them that are saved, and in them that perish. To the one we are the savor of death to death, and to the other the savor of life unto life. And who is sufficient for these things? For we are not as many who corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God in the rights, in the sight of God speak, we in Christ. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmity, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecution, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 to 10. My friends, there are many persons around us who seem dependable, but when you are faced with some challenging situation and you turn to them, then you are told that they cannot help. And of course, we feel so disappointed. But I want to remind us today of someone who we can truly rely on for comfort, protection, to provide for us, and to save lost mankind. That person is the one that we are serving the true and living God. He cares about every aspect of our lives. Someone said that he is our all in all and rightfully so. Whatsoever situation we face, he is always available, ready to help. I am sharing this morning on the theme, the all-sufficient God. The all-sufficient God. When I say that God is all-sufficient, what does it mean? It means that no matter what happened to any of his children, he can and he will take care of us if we only put our trust in him. You might ask, can this be true? Can God see us through in times of trials? God can send us comfort when we are in need of it. God is willing and ready to take care of all our needs, praise the Lord. God can certainly be our all-sufficient Lord. He never lets his children down. Many of us can testify of the many things that God has done and continue to do for us. I want to share three points this morning. Firstly, 
God is sufficient for salvation. St. John chapter 3 and verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God, my friends, cares so much about us that he sent his only son to die in our place so that we can have life and that we can have it more abundantly. Yes, God is sufficient for salvation. It does not matter who we are or how far gone in sin we have been. Jesus died for all. And he wants us to be saved. The word of God tells us whosoever will come and drink of the water of life freely, my dear friends will be saved. The word of God also tells us, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Many of us would remember Saul. The Bible tells us that while he was traveling on the road to Damascus, he was struck by a blinding light and there he met the Savior, Jesus Christ. His name was changed to Paul. He later said he was the chief of sinners. We see this in 1 Timothy 1 and verse 15. In his sufficiency, God saved Saul, who was before a blasphemer and one who was persecuting the Christians. Yet, Jesus saved him from his sins. If you are listening today and you have not yet given Jesus Christ your life, you can do so. Do not delay any longer, my friend. He loves you with an everlasting love. He loves you and he has a wonderful plan for your life. Once, there was a young boy swimming in a river while his mother sat at a picnic, picnic table gathering the leftovers. When she heard her son screaming for help, 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 help me, I am drowning. A man standing by took off his shirt and stood there until the boy cried help and went down for the last time. At that point, the man jumped in the water and swam out and rescued the boy. After getting back to shore, the mother frantically looked at the man who had saved her son and asked, why did you wait so long before you saved my boy. To which he answered, had I gone to rescue him any sooner, while he was still struggling, he would, we would have both drowned. But when he gave up, then I could rescue him. My dear friends, people are like that too. They try every means possible to get salvation in their own struggles. But it's when they give up all self-hope and truly put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ, they are saved. Today, if he is rapping at the door of your heart, do not turn him away. He loves you and he wants to save you. God is not only 
sufficient for salvation is also sufficient for material needs. I said earlier that God cares about every aspect of our lives. Throughout the Bible, we have read of instances where God provided for people. I will just make mention of some of them. 2 Corinthians 2 and verse 16 tells us, To the one we are the Savior of death unto death, and to the other the Savior of life unto life. And who is sufficient for these things? God, my dear people, can take care of every material needs, praise God. He has done it in the past and he can do it again. The children of Israel, as they wandered in the wilderness, they needed no shoes, clothes, food, nor water for 40 years. God took care of their material needs and praise God, he can take care of our needs today. In 1 Kings 19 verse 4 to 7, it says that Elijah was fed by an angel after the battle with the false prophet. He was very hungry and God was sufficient, hallelujah, to provide his material needs. Also, the prophet Elisha increases a widow's oil and food because of her obedience to God's leading. And in St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 14, we are told that Jesus fed a multitude of people after they had followed him throughout the day. God's promises for us today can be seen in St. Matthew 6 and verse 25. It says, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? God also promises us that he shall supply all our needs according to his riches in glory. Hallelujah. Today, I am happy to say, my friends, that there is no limit to what our God can do. We are serving a great, wonderful God, one who we can always rely on. He is Jehovah Jireh, our provider. We must trust and take him at his word. He will never fail us. The Bible says that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So whatever we need, Whatever need we may have, my dear friends, let us trust the all-sufficient God. Thirdly, God is sufficient in times of trouble and temptation. God is sufficient in times of trouble and temptations. 
We are living in some trying times. So many things are happening around us and the world at large. Some folks are wondering what will happen soon. But the God we are serving, my dear friends, neither slumber nor sleeps. And he said, we are to call upon him in the days of trouble and he will deliver us. So let us not become fearful and troubled. The all-sufficient God promised never to leave us, neither forsake us. Yes, my friends, God is sufficient when we are in dangerous situations. I am sure you remember the story of the children of Israel at the Red Sea. How wonderfully God protected them and destroyed those who were against them. The three Hebrew men were cast into a fiery furnace because they refused to worship an idol. And God was sufficient to keep them from harm while in the fire. He even visited the men in the fire because the king stated, I see four men walking in the fire and the fourth is like the Son of God. Hallelujah. So many persons, my dear people, had a trying times, but they remained strong in the Lord. Then too, there were Paul and Silas. As you know, they were placed in prison. Their faith was so strong in the Lord that they began to sing and praise God at midnight. God's response was to send an earthquake to open those prison doors. God proved himself to Paul and Silas as the all-sufficient God. Isaiah 43 and verse 2 reminds us of how much God is sufficient for us. It says, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they will not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burnt, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. It is, my dear friends, the same God that we are serving today. Let us not fail to call on his name. One writer says, if in danger for him call, trust in Jesus, that is all. God will take care of us if we only trust him. Whatever is happening in our lives today, he is always sufficient in times of trouble, in times of testing. I can assure you, my dear friends, that he is the God that is more than enough. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 10 and 13 says, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that he are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape 
that he may be able to bear it. Hallelujah. Paul had great trials because of a thorn in the flesh. 2 Corinthians 12, 7 to 9. And it says, Unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelation, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this one thing, I saw the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. And then Paul, my friends, went on to exclaim in verse 10, Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmity, in reproaches, in distress for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. What Paul's thorn in the flesh was, we are not sure. Whatever his thorn in the flesh was, after asking God three times to remove it, God replied to Paul. Replied to Paul was, my grace is sufficient for thee. Is the same God today who is strong to deliver, mighty to save, and is able to keep us in our most difficult times. I am not sure what you are faced with today, but I can tell you that God is able to help you. He, my dear friends, can give us the victory again and again. We can always put our trust in him. God is sufficient in times of troubles, in times of trials in one's life. Indeed, he is an all-sufficient God. And as I close, I want to quote two verses of one of our songs in the Salvation Army songbook that says, Though thunders roll and darkened be the sky, I'll trust in thee. Though joys may fade and prospects droop and die, I'll trust in thee in thee. No light may shine upon life's rugged way. Sufficient, hallelujah, is thy grace from day to day. Thy word is sure. Thy promise never fails. I'll trust in thee. A hiding place thou art when hell's assail. I'll trust in thee. I conquer all while hiding neath thy wings and in the storm, in the storm, sweet songs of triumph sing. Praise God. So, my dear friends, let us rely on the word of God. Let us continue to put our trust in God. Reminding ourselves on a daily basis that there is nothing that our God cannot do. I encourage you today 
continue to look to him who is the author and finisher of our faith. God richly bless you. Amen.
Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We give and uh, we say thank you to Major St. John for sh sharing with us the word this morning on the topic the all sufficient God. And we know that we are serving our all sufficient God. And we give God thanks for his word this morning to our hearts. And we pray wherever we you are. You were listening, and the word of God reached to you. And this morning, we want to continue to invite you. Do not be hesitant uh, to send your prayer request. And also, tell us how the program, the services, have been uh, reaching to your hearts and bless you. Let us know, because we will want to know, you know, how you have been blessed from our weekly uh, services. So at this time, we are going to sing our closing song, the number 669. It tells us of the guiding hands of God upon us. It's a precious promise God has given to the weary passerby all the way from earth to heaven. I will guide thee with mine eye. I will guide thee. I will guide thee. I will guide thee with mine eye all the way from earth to heaven. I will guide thee with mine eye. Precious world. Says when thy secret hopes have perished in the grave of years gone by, let this promise still be cherished. I will guide thee with mine eye. When the shades of life are, fall are falling and all on the hour has come to die, hear thy trusted leader calling. I will guide thee with mine eye. I will sing the fourth verse together. When the shades of life are falling and the hour has come to die, and the trust and lead the calling, I will guide thee with my eye. I will guide thee. I will guide thee. 
Father, we give you thanks for the time we spend together in your presence. The all-sufficient God. We thank you, God, that you are our God who watches over us every day, day and night. And we are confident that your guiding hands are upon us and you are leading us every day. And so, Father God, we thank you, God, for your word today. And for all those who are listening to your word today, God, I pray that your word will find a place in their hearts where your word will be germinated, God, in their hearts and will be fruit, will bring fruits. Father God, continue, God, uh, to have your way in our lives. As we go through, our, through this week, God, we do not know what this week will, uh, will bring for us, but one thing we do know that we are in your hands and all your uh, listeners, God, are in your hands and we know for sure, God, uh, you are the all-sufficient God and you will guide us uh, where we want to go. Father, continue to be with us and have your way in our lives as I say thanks in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 At this time, the benediction is taken from Jude 21, verse 24. It says, uh, to him who is able to keep you from uh, stumbling and to present you to, to present you before the glorious presence without falling, falls, and with great joy. To the holy God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, and before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. Enjoy your day and have yourself a wonderful week.